Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, I bring you the first game from round two of the Dragon Gym Challenge. The lovely David Hockman took down Birdkeeper Toby. David is playing a Darkness deck using products like this. And we've got the lovely Jack Old here of Omnipoke. He previously took down Pablo Mesa's Lightning deck, and he is playing products like this. Because, of course, this tournament has been put together with the help from the lovely folks at Dragon Shield. And we got some links for the products featured in the video. They will be... Well, I mean, the best thing to do is to go to TCG Player. There are links in the description for that. The winner of this moves on to the final, and I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I don't always say this... This is a wonderful, brilliant series between two brilliant players playing two brilliant decks. Trust me when I say you're going to want to grab yourself a nice cold beverage and settle down for this one. This game is awesome. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so on the top, we've got the lovely Jack Old of Omnipoke playing his fire deck. On the bottom, we've got the lovely David Hockman from Limitless playing his Darkness deck. We saw them both win really fun round one games. David took down Birdkeeper Toby's Grass deck. Jack took down Pablo Mesa, otherwise known as Tablemon's Lightning deck. So we've got two winning players here. These aren't players who are just giving it a go. They've already won round one. So it looks like Jack is going to go first. He's got a Volpix and a Growlithe looking to evolve them. And he gets a Heat Factory Prism Star into play. Discards of Fire Energy, draw three cards, jobs are good un. Now, David, for his part, he's got a Spiritomb. I adore Spiritomb. It's got an ability that pops one damage counter onto it. And for one Darkness Energy, you do 10 damage base, plus 30 more for each Darkness Energy on it. I know, right? So that's going to be an awful lot of fun. It means he gets up to 160 with all the damage counters he can. It's only got 60 HP. Now, we do see Jack playing a Poker Gear, though. I'm not sure if he actually took a supporter, mind you. He is flicking back and forth to his hand. It may well be that he was looking for something like a Cynthia. Because he had Magnolia in hand. And there was one there, but he didn't want to play it over Magnolia. So, he's just going to play the Magnolia. I don't know, but it didn't look like he took a supporter there. Unless I missed it. Oh, he's got another Poker Gear. Um, you can only play two of each card in this format at the moment. So, <laughs> that's both his Poker Gear gone for the game. Let's hope he's got something good off of this one, shall we say. Otherwise, oh, oh there was a Cynthia there, so I don't. Did he just drop two poker gear and not grab a supporter? I might have missed something. He might have kind of done a lovely sleight of hand there, but doesn't look like he grabbed a supporter. Bearing in mind it is turn one of the game. He can't play a supporter. He's not allowed. Does get an energy on Growlithe, though, which is rather lovely. And then David goes over, gets a Lily's Clefairy Doll onto the bench, gets an energy onto his Spiritomb, gets a damage counter onto his Spiritomb. That means he is going to be able to hit for 40 damage, which is rather nice. Doesn't take down the Volpix, but it's all right. Volcanian goes down there on the bench for, for Jack. Gets an energy on two Volcanium. It's not going to do too much at the moment, but... It's kind of there for the future. Oh, now he had Cynthia in hand and he had Magnolia. There are obviously a lot of decisions to be made there about which one to go for. He's gone for Magnolia. He wants a faster, more aggressive start. There is an argument to play Cynthia here, but then you're shuffling cards back into your deck. You're getting fewer cards. And remember, Jack's playing an evolution deck and he's playing Cinderace a stage two with no rare candy. So there is an argument here that what Jack really needs to do is get set up. He needs to get all of his Pokemon out and everything else before David gets rolling. David's got a very strong Trixie deck that can do a number of different things very well. So Jack needs to make sure he's got some answer. He needs to start getting rolling before David just kind of <laughs> ruins his day. Hey-ho. Now, he does get his Arcanine out and a second energy. Now, he does need three, but once he's got three energy on there, he's doing 120 and accelerating two energy from the discard. That ain't too bad. For the time being, it looks like he's just going to have to use Volcanion to search his deck for a fire energy and attach it to one of his Pokemon. Presumably Arcanine. 
Okay, so David here's got a Pokemon communication. He's going to grab himself a Pokemon. Remember, it lets you swap a Pokemon in your hand for a Pokemon in your deck. And it really depends what David wants to set up here. David's deck, as we saw against Bird Keeper Toby, it's a, it's a very reactive deck. He's got Spiritomb that's good when you've got damage counters on. He's got Umbreon, which is good when your opponent took a KO the previous turn. He's got Guzzlord that is good when it's got four energy on. David doesn't have many Pokemon here, and I've played David's deck a lot. I was testing the Professor Cup format, which is similar to ours, except you're not allowed to play Prism Stars or B-String. And you're allowed to mix typings, but we really wanted a typing-focused tournament. So, you know, that's where we went. And I played a variant of David's deck a lot. And one of the only real problems is, in the early game, you've basically got Spiritomb. But you've got to get the damage on, so it takes a turn or two. Now, he has gone for his Eevee to evolve up into Umbreon. Umbreon does 120 if your opponent took a KO the previous turn. So, really good. And remember, right, there's two energy on the Arcanine. There's one energy on the Volcanium. If Jack whacks a second energy on Volcanium here, he will be able to hit for 110 and take a KO. So, he needs to be very... You know, D David needs to be a little bit careful about what he's setting up. Now, he does get to do 70 to the Volcanium because there's a second damage counter on that Spiritomb. So, he's getting damage on the field, is David. Now, do remember, he does play both Galarian, Obstagoon, and Zigzagoon. Zigzagoon, you play it, drop a damage counter. Obstagoon, you evolve into it, drop three damage counters. So, spreading damage around the field can be an option for David, because he's got those Pokemon that can go and drop damage. That's a pretty good thing. So, we see another Heat Factory Prism Star. Of course, there is a double win here with Heat Factory Prism Star. Not only do you get to draw three cards, but Arcanine wants Fire Energy in the discard to accelerate with its attack. Cinderace wants Fire Energy in the discard to attach with its ability. So, it is a pretty nice option. Now, there's a decision for Jack here. Now, he has got the Welder. Oh, just choosing to put one energy on Volcanium with Welder. Because he can attack here and take out Spiritomb, but then if David's got the Umbreon, he will take out Volcanium. Having said that, does David have the Umbreon? One of the challenges for the players in this tournament is you're only allowed to play two of each type of card. Two Eevee, two Umbreon, two Quick Ball. And that means that you will occasionally run into situations where, okay... If I've got the Umbreon, I've got the KO here. But actually, you're less likely to have the Umbreon by virtue of only being able to play two in your deck. It makes things much more fun. It makes things a little bit more difficult. <laughs> but I do think it makes things a lot more fun. We are increasing the challenge for the players here. But I think in a way which is fun and exciting. I've spoken to all the players, obviously, about the tournament. And what a lot of them have said is that having this alternate format with different rules has basically forced people to really rethink the way they're building their decks. They've got to try different things when they're actually doing their deck building here. They can't just go back to the old tropes. And that's a good thing. So Jack has been able to get himself a Growlithe and a Salazzle down here. Now, the Salazzle is very nice. It evolves into, excuse me, Salandit, which evolves into Salazzle, which does exactly the same as Heat Factory Prism Star for what it's worth. And a Growlithe that just evolves into another Arcanine. Jack's got all his lovely evolving Pokemon here. He has gone for a very evolution-heavy deck. And I've seen a bunch of people say that that's not really what they would do here because of the two of each card etc but jack's making it work jack is very much making it work here he has got the stage one arcanine stage one nine tail stage one salazzle stage two cinderace but then again dav has got the stage two obstagoon the stage one umbreon the stage one chinchino and he's making all that work evolution pokemon are good plus an awful lot of the good basic pokemon are more than one prize and we're not allowing them in this tournament so we do see jack doing what we expected jack was going to be doing and taking out that spiritu and that opens it up for david here now he does have a rosa so unless both his umbreon are prized he is guaranteeing to get it here also plays a lysander's lab which turns off tools but honestly that's going to hurt david more than it's going to hurt jack here 
Jack, as far as if I'm remembering correctly, really isn't relying on any tools. David, however, plays Vitality Band, and against Jack's high HP Pokemon, Vitality Band can be the difference between getting a KO or not. For instance, a 5 damage counter Spiritomb with a Vitality Band will one-hit KO Cinderace, but it needs a Vitality Band. So David plays the Rosa here, he's got Energy, he's got Umbreon, he's got Professor Magnolia. That's about as good as you could hope for here. He's got the Umbreon ready to evolve up into, which he needs. An energy, now he has actually, it looks like he's put the energy back, there's nothing to attach it to right now. And if he's got nowhere to put the energy, he's got a Magnolia in hand, next turn, he would just be discarding that energy and he wouldn't have it to use and that would be a bad thing. Now he has just drawn a prize and he's got a card he's going to draw at the beginning of his next turn, but as it stands at the moment... It doesn't look like he's got any great target for that darkness energy, and he doesn't want to waste it with a Magnolia. Now, if Jack's got an energy, he's got the KO here. He has got the Salazzle, discard a fire energy, draw three cards. So he had an energy in hand. Tell me you got another one there, Jack. Because Arcanine's got a free... There we go. Arcanine's got a free energy attack and a four energy attack, but it does not have a two energy attack. So it looks like he's going to get the KO on Umbreon here while accelerating two energy onto that Growlithe on the bench, which means if Jack can find his second Arcanine, he's got Arcanine ready to go. It would be a good idea for him here to try and find a Score Bunny in the not-too-distant future. There goes Giant Half to get rid of Lysander Labs. Let's him discard a card from his hand and find two Fire Energy. It's a pretty good card. And here comes Marnie. Both players will be shuffling a hand into that. No, excuse me. Shuffling a hand and putting it on bottom of their deck. Jack's going to go ahead and get five cards. David's going to get four. Now, bearing in mind, Jack saw David take Magnolia off the Rosa. Jack knows that David has got a Professor Magnolia in his hand ready to go. So what Jack's basically doing here is going, look, I'm KOing your only Pokemon. When I take the KO on Umbreon, your board is going to consist entirely of Lily's Pokedoll, and I'm giving you a four-card hand. Jack is trying to make sure that David cannot come back from this. Yeah. <laughs> now, Great Ball comes down here. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Find a Pokemon, put it into your hand. And Jack is getting very close to potentially winning this game. He hasn't got the Score Bunny down to go into a... He's got a Cinderace, evidently. But he hasn't got a Score Bunny. But then again, Arcanine is big and powerful. The other thing to bear in mind is, other than Obstagoon, all of David's Pokemon will go down to an attack from Arcanine while he's accelerating energy. So Jack can afford to go Arcanine early here so that he can buy himself a little bit of time to get the Cinderace rolling a little bit later. There is the score, buddy. And I love what Jack's doing here. He's saying right off the bat, look, I'm cool with this. I, I know I can make this work. I've got the Arcanine, and not for nothing, I've got a Growlithe on me bench ready to go. Oh, there's his Nine Tails. That is huge. He can discard two Fire Energy from his hand and then gust one of David's bench Pokemon up. It means if anyone is really threatening, he gets to go after it. And then he gets a Ditto down as well. Not that he really needs very much. He has got the KO on the Umbreon, obviously. He's already got... Growlithe and Arcanine and Salazzle, not for nothing, both Growlithe now have free energy, and the Score Bunny and the Ditto Prism Star and the Nine Tail. Like, oh, now he has actually managed to just drop a Darkrai Prism Star with two energy on and then drops an Ordinary Rod to just get a couple of Pokemon, a Spiritomb and an Eevee back in his deck. And then he's got Professor Magnolia. So that is actually a phenomenal hand off Amani. That is about the very best you could hope for from Amani. He got Darkrai, Energy Retrieval, Super Rod, Energy and Magnolia from Marnie and his draw for the turn. So he energy retrievals for an energy, drops Darkrai with those two energy, super rods a couple Pokemon back into his deck, and then Magnolia's for a new hand of seven. Seriously, right? Coming off of a Marnie to four, that is about the best you could possibly hope for. And bearing in mind, now, on the one hand... He has got Lily's Pokedoll in the active, which is awesome. 
And against most decks, that would buy David a turn or two he needs. And David clearly needs a turn or two here. He needs a turn to start getting stuff rolling. The problem is Jack can gust. Jack can go ahead and gust around that Lily's Poker Doll and actually start taking prizes. One would imagine off of the Eevee. Now, the Weavile here is very interesting because the Weavile does 50 damage for each Pokemon with an ability. And as it stands at the moment, Jack has got two abilities on the board, Nine Tails and Salazzle. But if he evolves up into two Cinderace, he's then going to have four abilities on the board, which is 200 damage. So if Jack is serious about going for abilities and he is able to gust, it is actually the Weavile he needs to gust. Darkrai Prism Star does do 120 damage, puts your opponent to sleep, and then they've got to flip double heads to wake up, which is kind of fantastic. But one thing that is very, very, very much worth bearing in mind, it takes four energy. So even with the two energy on from the ability, he still needs another two attachments, and that's going to be awkward. Now, the other thing to bear in mind here, when Jack takes a prize next, he is going to open up the window of B-String. David does play B-String with Goslord. We saw that in the first game. Links to the... All the we are in round two, remember. Links to all the round one games are in the description. So do go and check them out. All four of those games I enjoyed watching and commentating. That we've actually got on a really good group of players and decks and games. And I know I sound biased, and I am. I'm doing the commentating, and I was instrumental in putting it all together. And it's been a huge time commitment on my part. But I am really enjoying these games. But we picked awesome people who are going to build awesome decks. So we know David plays a Guzzlord, and we know Jack has to take one prize at a time. So the next time Jack takes a prize, he's opening up the window for B-String, which will last until he takes two more prizes and goes down to two. Now, Jack chooses not to gust. He may not have had enough energy there. So he takes down the Lily's Polka Doll. He may have wanted to. He may have been going, look, David's got two Polka Doll and no way to recover them. So let's just get rid of them and then I don't have to worry about them anymore. Or he just might not have had the end. Having said that, he's got giant half. Having said that, there's only so much energy you can discard, so... But then he's got Cinderace and Arcanine. I think if I was Jack, I really would have tried to go and get that Weavile off the bench. Or Sneasel off the bench. But then again, does Jack know? We made gentlemen's agreements that nobody would watch anybody's round one game until they played round two so or until they'd also played their round one sorry so yeah sorry so in this game neither player has watched the other players round one they promised they wouldn't until they played and then i trust ja david and jack they're both lovely people so the thing is we don't actually we don't know if jack knows that david's playing weavile now, having said that, Jack has just taken out David's other Lily's Poker Doll. David hasn't got an energy for two turns running. Now, the good news is he's got a Professor, o uh, Professor Round's lecture, and he is playing the 60 HP Minchino, which you kind of have to do, because even though the 70 HP has more HP, stop me if that sounds a bit obvious, the 60 HP can be searched out with Professor Round's lecture, which is pretty important. So now he's got a Minchino ready to evolve to get a draw engine. He's got a second EV ready to evolve, and he's got Spiritomb. Having said that, Jack's about to go to three prizes remaining, and David doesn't have much on the board. Jack might not have won the game with the early Amani when David got a ridiculous hand out of Amani. But then, having said that, even after the Professor Magnolia, David didn't get much at all he ended up with a couple of lilies poking on a couple of dark rhine now that's a nice one so now jack is choosing to do the gusting with nine tails he actually drags up mincino and i love this play he can see that he's gotten set up way better than david here and he then he fire crystals those two energy right back so he's going you know what i'm ahead on prizes i'm, I'm up by four prizes taken now to one and Dav has not got a much rolling. I'm oh, sorry, three prizes taken to one. Jack's taken three. Dav has taken one. So you know what? 
Why don't I take out the Minchino so David can then not chin Chino and start getting a draw engine? Now Lysander's lab comes down and that's huge, right? Because Giant Half lets Jack swap a card in his hand for two fire energy and those two fire energy allow him gusting. Now he does go and get a Cinderace down. David still has very little rolling. And bearing in mind, he doesn't even get a KO with Umbreon. It would take Umbreon with Vitality Band, bearing in mind Labs is down. And a Zigzagoon to get a KO on Arcanine. Right, and at this stage, if Jack does not gust the Sneasel, that tells us very clearly that Jack does not remember or hasn't twigged which Weavile it is. And that's nothing against Jack. We are, we're using cards in this, in this tournament we don't usually see. Now, we've just seen... Ah, there we go. I was going to say, I had more faith in Jack than that. He double evolves into Cinderace. He's now got four abilities on the field. On the field? Don't know what build is. David would be able to go Weavile Energy 200 damage. And Jack goes, no. 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 Now, he does play down the Zigzagoon, so he gets to drop a damage counter down somewhere, but it does look very strongly like this is going to be Jack's game. Because the other, it's not just that Jack has got two prizes left to take and David's got five. Jack's got one, he's got two Cinderace that when they come active and use their ability will have enough energy on. He's got a Growlithe, which when it evolves into an Arcanine will have enough energy to attack. What David needs is to be able to start taking out Jack's attackers, maybe drop a Marnie or a reset stamp, and then start pulling off a comeback. But it's really hard to pull off a comeback when your opponent has everything on the board they need to win. Technically, none of Jack's attackers are ready to go. He does have a four, uh, four damage spirit tomb and take a KO, which is lovely. But, yeah, if Jack's got an Arcanine here, he's sorted. Or in energy for right there's the Arcanine. And that'll be game one, ladies and gentlemen. There was nothing David could do. Weirdly enough, that early game Marnie isn't what sealed it. It was drawing nothing off the Magnolia that really sealed it, which I suppose might have been the Marnie. But either way, Jack takes a decisive game one. Didn't even ever need a Cinderace. Arcanine in this format is a fantastically powerful Pokemon. And... In that first game, David just could not set up an answer to it. So moving over into game two, we are going to need David to have something a bit better here. Now, Jack did have an extra card due to a mulligan there. And there he does go ahead and take it. And the question is, does David... David wants to go second here, which I don't hate that at all. Because he can do 60 damage turn one. No, he can't. Yes, he can. Because one damage counter on Spiritomb 30, plus the 10 base 40, plus Vitality Band 50, plus Zigzagoon 60. Spiritomb is weird. And to be fair, 70, because David plays two Zigzagoon. It's going to be tough to put all that off, but possible. Okay, sooner or later, Jack is going to have to take a supporter off a of Poker Gear. Because we saw them both like turn one last time, and he didn't drag a supporter out from either of them. Yay! Jack uses Poker Gear to get a supporter. Go, I'm proud of you, Jack. Go, Jack. Woo, Jack. We love you, Jack. So, down comes Pokemon Communication. Puts a Cinderace. Yeah, he's not going to need Cinderace anytime soon. And now, does he go Salandit to try and get a bit of a draw engine going? Or Growlithe to try and get a bit of an attacker going? I mean, obviously, one thing he does is start searching through his prizes here. Well, he's not searching through his prizes. That would be terribly cheeky. And it is a Salandit. What he's doing is looking through his deck, trying to discover what is prized. There's no point getting Growlithe down if both your Arcanine are prized, for instance. Now, he is going to Pokemon Communication away a Salazzle. An interesting play, of course. Because, obviously, if Salazzle was still in his hand, he would be able to evolve up at the beginning of next turn and then have that draw engine going. The thing is, that's next turn. Jack wants something this turn. You know what he can do next turn if he's got a Growlithe on the bench? Energy, Welder 2 Energy, Attack. Once he evolves into Arcanine. But he's got to have the Growlithe on the bench to do so. Of course, you know what's better than that? Ditto Prism Star. Now, Ditto Prism Star is slow... And it's going to take a lot, right? But if David's got a Pokemon Catcher and can flip heads, that Ditto Prism Star is, is not going to work. 
Now, you got to flip heads from Pokemon Catcher. Jack's got to be feeling good that David can't do it. But Ditto Prism Star's got 40 HP. So there will there is potential that David can go damage, energy, catcher, boom, in your face. Now, he does play Professor Realm's Lecture, which is a great, great turn one option for David here. Let's him get three Pokemon with 60 HP or less. There was an argument to play Professor Oak's setting over Professor Realm's Lecture. Let's you get three basic Pokemon of different typings, and they're not limited by HP. But there are going to be plenty of times that David wants to get a Zigzagoon and a Spiritomb, or two Spiritomb. Or a Mincino and an Eevee. David plays a lot of Colorless and Darkness. It's all he's allowed to play, to be fair. So, although Professor Oak's setting would get him a Colorless and a Darkness, he really does need to free from Professor Realm's lecture. Question is, what does he get? You've got to imagine there's going to be a Mincino and an Eevee. Oh, Ditto Prism Star. I mean, a Ditto Prism Star is an Eevee, right? It's just an Eevee that could be an Umbreon, or if needed, it could be a Galarian Lanoon or something along those lines. So I do like that. I do like that from David. And, oh, he's got the Meowth. Oh, he's got the Meowth! 70 damage, one hit KO. Oh, I didn't even see he had the Meowth. That's such a good play. Galarian Meowth for zero energy does 10 damage. But on your first turn of the game, if you go second, it does 70. So what David did was use his attachment for the turn to retreat Spiritomb. Deal 70 damage with... Gal oh, sorry, Alolan Meowth. It's an Alolan Meowth from the Sun and Moon era. And do 70 damage for a KO. Even better than Spiritomb. <laughs> oh, I forgot for a minute he had the Alola Meowth in his deck. But I... Oh, that was so good. That was so good. Davin and I are both united in our love for that Alola Meowth. He does play the Persian as well. Persian for zero energy does 80 da uh, 90 damage, but 30 less for each energy on the defending Pokemon. So it, it is actually pretty good if you can Pokemon catch a support Pokemon into the active, but that is the only circumstance under which it is good. You've got to be capturing a Pokemon into the active or else it doesn't work. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> that was absolutely beautiful. So, we do see a roast reveal there from Jack discarding a fire energy from his hand to draw three cards. And what's he got from here? Now he's got the Arcanine onto the onto the Ditto. And now he's got a Quick Ball. And he's got a lot of options here. Does he want the Volpix to give him Gusting in the future? Does he want a Growlithe to evolve into an Arcanine? Probably not Score Bunny. We saw in the previous game that Score Bunny isn't needed till kind of the mid game. It's more of an, I'll do this later when I've had time to evolve. Bearing in mind, Jack plays... Oh, it's a Volcanian. It's not bad either. Score Bunny, Jack plays no rare candy. So he has got to evolve up manually. But Jack's game plan is such that he doesn't need rare candy. Jack's not going for the ha-ha-ha immediate stage two thing. Jack is going for the ha-ha-ha. I've got Arcanine. So I'm just going to chill here with Arcanine for a while. And I'm going to worry about all these other fools later. It's hard to fault him, ladies and gentlemen. Hard to fault him. So down comes Volcanion, gets an energy on, and then there's a switch, and just accelerates an energy. It's a weird kind of play, this, because you don't end up with any more energy on the field. You end up with, you put an energy on Volcanion to put an energy on Arcanine. You could have just put the energy on Arcanine. Here's the thing, though. Attacks like Volcanion are good when you can do it two or three times. And he knows that Volcanion isn't going down this turn. Spiritomb's hitting 70 damage. That's not enough. Alolan Persian can do 60, which, to be fair, is not bad. That would not be a bad play at this stage. He does get a Vitality Band onto Spiritomb. There's the Evolution Incense. Tell me it's for the Meowth, uh, for the Persian. Tell me it's Alolan Persian. If I've said Galarian when I meant Alolan, I do apologize. They are definitely Alolan Persian. There is no Galarian Persian. There's Galarian Berserker. But there are three different Meowths. You've got Meowth, Alolan, and Galarian. 
Now, he's probably... Oh, no, he is going. I was going to say he might be going for the Mincino there to give himself a draw engine. I like this play. No, it's not perfect. No, he's not doing a huge amount of damage. But the other thing he's saying to Jack is, if you don't keep committing energy to this Volcanian, I'm going to KO it next turn. So I, I, I really like this play. Plus, David is actually putting in work with Galarian Meowth, uh, Alolan Meowth and Alolan Persian. <laughs> oh, I'm way too familiar with these cards because I play them way too much. So we do see a Cynthia coming down, giving David a new hand of six cards. And what's the play here? I mean, he's clearly going to do 60 damage. What, he wants a Chinchino, right? That's what he really wants right now. He wants that Chinchino. Did he get it? He probably didn't. If he'd got it, you'd think he'd have probably played it by now. So Jack is taking advantage of knowing that David's deck is quite reactive and his Pokemon need a bunch to get going. Spiritomb, damage, Goslord, energy, etc. Oh, does get Lanoon onto the Ditto. We don't often see that because you want to play the Galarian Zigzagoon to get the damage down early game. But I do like that rather nicely. I like that he's got that Lanoon so we can go Obstagoon. Now, Obstagoon isn't an amazing Pokemon against Jack specifically, but it's a very good Pokemon generally. It does 90 damage for a couple of energy and blocks attacks from basic Pokemon. Now, Jack isn't going to be playing many basic Pokemon, but he is going to be playing that Volcanion that's in the active, so it basically just shuts them out. So, David does the 60. Jack gets a Welder onto that Arcanine. And I believe he should be able to attach and retreat Volcanion. If I'm remembering Volcanion's retreat cost properly as two. And I'm just going to double. Yes, it is a retreat cost of two. So he is just going to be able to attach an energy and retreat it. So you guys are lucky. After I record this, I'm going to go and put images on the screen. So you can always see the active Pokemon for both players with all the salient information. When I'm recording, I don't have that. I'm doing stuff from memory slash looking it up cheekily in a second screen. So, you know, think yourselves lucky. There we go. Now. There is an argument here for Jack. Don't retreat the Volcanian. And to be honest, it's what I would do. Instead of retreating Volcanian, attach a second energy. Take the KO on Alola Meowth. You are, but then you are giving up a prize to Spiritomb, whereas if you retreat to Arcanine, David doesn't get a prize off the, off the Arcanine. David needs, yeah, so four, four damage on the Spiritomb will do it. Four damage on the Spiritomb is 120, plus the 10 base is 130, plus Vitality Band or Zigzagoon is 140. Seriously, the Vitality Band and Zigzagoon in David's deck, they really, if he's going to win, I expect him to make use of the extra damage there. Incidentally, the, the reason why David got the Lanoon on the board last turn, I'm fairly sure, isn't because he actually wants to attack with Zigzagoon, uh, sorry, uh, Obstagoon. It's so that now, at any point, he can just go, boom, Obstagoon, free damage on a Pokemon. Of course, Jack's got Vulpix getting ready to gust with Ninetales. But then again, if he's taking out the Lanoon to try and stop Obstagoon, he's not taking out the Spiritomb, which are getting more and more threatening every turn with every damage counter that goes on them, etc. I mean, the one thing he really doesn't care about much is, Galera is Alolan Meowth. Having said that, Alolan Meowth could really put in some work. Oh, I want to see him take some KOs with it. I mean, we're basically talking Salazzle and Ninetales, right? It's not going to do much against anything else because they're going to have a bunch of damage on. But, like, that Salazzle is sitting there with 100 HP, so Vitality Band or Zigzagoon, boom, KO. Similarly, the Ninetales is sitting there with 100 HP, so again, with no energy on, if David can gust it up, it's either a Zigzagoon or a Vitality Band, and he actually gets a KO on it. Or any basic pokemon if jack benches a score bunny and doesn't put any energy on david can gust and take it out with a lowland persian a lowland persian is a weirdly threatening pokemon i mean if jack doesn't evolve into nine tails david can go pokemon catcher go here oh it looks like 
he's actually just using it to accelerate energy. And that could be pretty big because now that score bunny is actually out of range of Alolan Persian. Alolan Persian will now do 60 and score bunny's got 70. So that was actually a very heads up play from Jack there. Rather than trying to take the KO, and he is going to need to take some KOs eventually, but what he's trying to do is what he did in game one. Be attacking with Pokemon that are so big, David doesn't have an answer, and just rocking off multiple KOs in a row while David is struggling to retort. Having said that, David's got a much better setup than last game. David's got those Spiritomb that are getting more and more damage counters on. He's got that Lanoon ready to evolve. He's got Persian. And that Persian, like I say, it can still take out either the Volpix or with a tiny bit of help, it can take out the Salazzle. Vitality Band incidentally won't do it because Lysander's Lab will be turning it off at the moment. It's interesting to me that the only real relevant, <laughs> the only relevant tool in the game is David's Vitality Band. But... David still needs to play the labs because Jack's playing Heat Factory Prism Star and two Giant Half. I assume that's the count he's playing. And David is probably playing one Black Market and two Lysander Labs. And remember, if David can get Black Market Prism Star to stick, all of his Darkness Pokemon with energy attached don't give up prizes. We saw him do that against Berkey Batobi and it was huge. So we do see the Galeri. Oh. That was big. So we did see the Zigzagoon drop a damage counter onto Arcanine. And we know that Arcanine needs to be down to 130 so Spiritomb can take it out. We then saw Obstagoon drop free damage onto Score Bunny. Or, yeah, Score Bunny. But we know that Cinderace has 170. And again, 130 is what Dav is looking for. 130 is a 5 damage Spiritomb. Sorry, a 4 damage Spiritomb. Or it is a, an Umbreon with a Vitality Band. So David is dropping a damage here to bring Jack's Pokemon into range. Now, oh my goodness, Alolan Persian actually takes the KO onto Volcanion. David is up two prizes to nothing. And it's all thanks to Alolan Meowth and Alolan Persian. Jack couldn't do everything last turn. He needed an energy on the score bunny to keep it out of range and just to get it ready for Cinderace later. And he needed an energy on Volcanion to bring it out of Persian range. And he needed an energy to try and take a KO on Persian. And in the But he needed the energy on Ark and I'm ready to use that in the future. And there was just too much going on at once. I still think I would have used Volcanion to take the KO. But then again, Jack knows this deck far better than I. I've played with the deck. You know, I've had to play a few games with these decks. It'd be rude if I didn't. But I, I, I just think Jack was in too difficult a position there. If I'm honest with you. It's just, there's so much he needed last turn. And that's the thing. David might be playing a reactive deck. But here's the big difference between game one and game two. David's got time. David's been given time and David's drawn okay. He did not have much luck game one. So now David is actually setting up and you can see in Jack's play he's reacting to it. He's having to try and make sure he's not falling into David's traps and the traps are numerous. David's deck is an extremely difficult deck to play. It takes a player like David to play it. Being able to make all of these and you're thinking several turns ahead. He literally dropped four damage on a score bunny so that he can KO it in like three or four turns time when it becomes a Cinderace. That's pretty important. Now, he does get the Roast Reveal with Salazzle to draw himself some extra cards, gets Giant Half to get rid of Labs, but you'll notice that David is making sure that Jack... You won't see David play the first stadium in these games. I feel extremely confident, unless Jack, like, discards all of his stadiums, I feel pretty confident that David is going to let Jack play the first stadium. Because David knows that Black Market Prism Star is a win condition. Because especially if David can make sure that Jack doesn't have Ninetales, and Ninetales is big if Black Market Prism Star's out, or David can just keep Fire Energy on his, or Darkness Energy on his Darkness Pokemon, Black Market Prism Star is an actual win condition here. Now, we do see Jack taking a KO on that Alolan Persian. He accelerates two energy onto the new score bunny on his bench. And he finally takes his first prize. Thing is, David is now ready. 
Because now David puts a fourth damage counter on Spiritomb. Notice he's not putting the one with the Vitality Band active. That's very important. He now just needs one energy, and Rosa will get him the energy. Had a Pokemon code last turn, so he gets a Pokemon, he gets an energy, and he gets a trainer. You would imagine he's probably going to Chino here. There's an argument to go and get, say, an Eevee ready for an Umbreon in the future. Oh, he is going for the Eevee. Oh, and an Evolution Incense. That's why. A lot of... And he's using Evolution Incense to get Lanoon. A lot of the time, you do see players using Rosa to get a supporter for the following turn. We saw David do that earlier in the previous game with Professor Magnolia. Or Professor's Research Magnolia, as it's actually called. But this is really good. He's now got the KO with Spiritum, and he's got the Lanoon, and he's got the Eevee. We assume he's got a supporter card in hand. So this is really good. Doesn't go for the Chinchino, but again, the Chinchino is just a little bit of extra draw. If David's hand is good enough here, he doesn't really care about the Chinchino. Now there's an argument he's flying too close to the sun with Recess Stamp and Marnie potentially coming out. But he gets a KO with Spiritomb. Again, 4 damage Spiritomb, 120, plus the 10 base, 130. Plus the 10 from the previous Zigzagoon that was dropped is 140. And then you've got a KO right there and then. So, that was just David. He'd been setting this up for several turns. And you know what he's doing here. He's only played one Vitality Band. Do not be surprised if we see an Umbreon coming down with a Vitality Band. Coincidentally, right as that Cinderace with the damage comes in the active. Of course, Jack's not stupid. Jack's building up a second Cinderace on the bench. Oh, he's actually choosing to go for Score Bunny. Now, I'm fairly sure he doesn't play Rare Candy. I don't think he plays Rare Candy. So what's the score bunny doing in the active? Mm, to be fair, 20 damage for 2 energy. It's not a good attack by any stretch of the imagination. But it is enough to KO Spiritomb. Of course, Raboot would also get a KO. Raboot for 1 energy, and there is 1 energy on the Raboot, does 20 damage and searches your deck for a fire energy and attaches it to the Pokemon. But then again, David would have such an easy KO, it might not be worth doing it. So we do get two energy onto the Volcanian here. And what we might see... Obviously, he's playing a Welder, he's not cheating. What we might see here is a Score Bunny just retreating and the Volcanian taking the KO. The problem is, Jack needs to... Jack needs to make David use some Pokemon he'd rather not use. That four energy Spiritoon with the Vitality Band, David wants to save that. That is, that is one of his important Pokemon. I mean, with the Vitality Band, it can actually hit 170 and get a KO on a fresh score bunny. David doesn't want to use that until he has to. With a Volcanion, David can just get a KO with an Umbreon. With a score bunny, David can get a KO with Obstagoon, which incidentally would then lock David would lock Jack from attacking with Volcanion and would force Jack into bringing up a Cinderace if he was able to do so, which David could then counter with the Spiritomb. Oh, he does actually get Rabu out in the end. So it does look like he's taking a KO with Rabu here. But again, Rabu's got 90 HP. David could use Obstagoon here and force David into bringing out a Cinderace to take out the Obstagoon, which David could then take down. And David doesn't care about losing Obstagoon here. In some matchups, if David were to play against Josh's Psychic deck, for instance, and here we go, finally the Cinderace comes into the active, and this is a far better play for Jack. This is really what he wants here. Because David doesn't care if he takes a KO of Obstagoon and Obstagoon goes down. Against Josh's Psychic deck revolving around all basic Pokemon. Genius! Not against this deck. Not against this deck. So. The good news for Jack is that he is going to take a KO and go down to four prizes remaining. The bad news is... That Cinderace is going down... And then Dav is going to be down to two prizes. But then the good news is David is going to be able to respond. He's got two energy on that Volcanion, four energy on the field, even if Score Bunny goes down, Cinderace goes down. And if he gets a Cinderace, he is going to be able to get another Cinderace attacking next turn. 
Now, what does David have? He could use the spirit tomb, but you'd rather save the spirit tomb for a fresh score bunny. What he really wants to do here... He wants to KO with Umbreon, I think. So Umbreon can do it with a second Obstagoon. If second Obstagoon comes out, then Umbreon will get the KO. Or it can do it with Zigzagoon Vitality Band. They are the two options. Now, David does promote the Spiritomb, which is fair. You see why he's doing it. He's going to get the KO. The problem is, if he KOs this Score Bunny with an Umbreon, for instance... Then all of a sudden, he's got the Spiritomb ready for the next score bunny. But now, he's not got anything ready for the next score bunny. And he's down one game to nothing, right? If, if he loses this game, that's it. Jack's going to be heading off to the final to face either Joe or Josh. Huh. Three of the four, the four semi-finalists begin with Jay. We've got Josh, Jack, and Joe. How funny. I mean, the next couple of turns are going to be really pivotal in this game. We know that David's going to take a KO. We know that Jack's got the return KO. None of that's terribly exciting. The question is, how does David take out the next score bunny? Uh, Cinderace. Why am I getting them confused in this game? I know they're different Pokemon. Maybe it's because when I went through Pokemon Sword, I started with Sobble. And when I went through Pokemon Shield, I started with Grookey. And I never played a game with Score Bunny. Like, as in went through the story of Sword or Shield. Now, looks like David's got a Rosa here. Oh, did David start his turn too early? No. Hmm. Seems to be a slight delay here, and I'm not 100% sure why. Never mind. Ah, here we go. No, no, Jack was just doing a bit of searching, and David was resolving the Rosa. Everything is good, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is good. So we've got an energy, we've got a Black Market Prism Star, and we've got a Chinchino. Now, is that Jack's third stadium? I think it is. Because I believe both these players are playing three stadiums. And just so we're clear, David is one of the... Oh, he's got Chinchino and Umbra, and that's pretty good. David is one of the most meticulous players you'll ever find. David is an extremely thoughtful player that makes very few misplays and plans several turns ahead. So if David has searched for the Black Market Prism Star, that's his way of saying, I am sure that Jack is out of stadiums. Or he's not going to play it yet. There's a Vitality Band on the Umbreon. As we've been doing the maths this game, we've said quite clearly that it's going to be the Umbreon that takes the Vitality Band. So, with Tool Scrapper not being released until the next expansion, Rebel Clash, and there's no chance that Jack is going to be playing Faber in that deck, the Vitality Band is pretty safe. You'll notice that Jack hasn't actually been able to get Nine Tails out this game, but it surely can't be long. I mean, he's got very few cards left in his deck. So, we did see a Pokemon communication there. Got rid of Darkrai Prism Star. So. Okay. Huh. There goes the Black Market Prism Star. So David is sure, and we saw this in one of the games against Toby. In one of the games against Toby, we saw that David dropped a, a Black Market Prism Star when Toby had no stadiums. And Toby was just like, well, now what? Now remember, it's not all Darkness Pokemon. It says that Darkness Pokemon with Darkness Energy attached give up one fewer prize. And now Ninetales is going to be crucial for Jack. Chinchina will still give up a prize. And as it stands at the moment, Obstagoon... Oh, incidentally, Obstagoon did come out and put three damage counters on the second Cinderace. Obviously, it was going to. So, 
that essentially is we, we've been going through the maths over and over again we know that that obstagoon onto cinderace is absolutely huge for the numbers so david takes down a cinderace and it looks like he's in really good position for game two now there is nothing that there's, there's nothing that jack's really rolling with that david can't handle at this stage oh no no, we hadn't seen Heat Factory Prism Star yet. So David jumps a little bit early with the Black Market Prism Star, and that really costs him there. We hadn't seen Heat Factory Prism Star. I was remembering it back from game one. And that's that's bad. Because now Black Market Prism Star hasn't done anything. David must have miscalculated. I miscalculated. Or, remember, Jack had a very small deck left. He played Heat Factory Prism Star early on game one. David had every reason to think that if Jack hadn't played Heat Factory Prism Star, he didn't have access to Heat Factory Prism Star. But apparently he did. And here's the problem. Is, is David out of stadiums now? Has David played both Lysander Labs? Because now Jack could have a huge advantage in terms of drawing. Because that could stick for the... And let's be clear, right? Heat Factory Prism Star sticking for Jack is nowhere near as game-winning as Black Market Prism Star sticking for David, but still. So Jack takes a KO, but at this stage, it's not a huge problem. David's got Umbreon... Oh, actually, no, I say that. David's got Umbreon, but David still has one prize left to take after this Umbreon. How does he do it? Umbreon takes down Volcanion, Cinderace takes down Umbreon, then what? That's David's second Vitality Band. Now, he does still have a Galarian Zigzagoon left in his deck. We know that. Because he used a Ditto to go up to one of the Orbs to Goon. I mean, if he can hit heads on a... Po I'm fairly... I thought David played Pokemon Catcher. He might not. If David can hit heads on a Pokemon Catcher, then Orbs to Goon could take out one of the other Pokemon. So he does play... Oh, okay, there we go. So he is getting a Spiritomb and a Sneasel back in along with a couple of energy. But as it stands at the moment, David needs a plan for his last prize. He needs something for his last prize. He's got the Umbreon, and that's for this prize. But you know that next turn, Jack's going to bring Cinderace up. And Cinderace is going to have 140 HP remaining and be hitting 190 damage. What then? I don't have the answer, incidentally. <laughs> um, he needs to bench something this turn, ideally. Now, okay, so there goes the Sneasel. I think he played a, um, what do you call him? So he, he does get the Sneasel down, and that's good. Yeah, I really like the Sneasel play. I love that Sneasel play. That Sneasel play is sneaky big. Because now, if the only... Yeah, I love that. That Sneasel play is genius. Right, here's how that Sneasel play breaks down. If Jack evolves into Ninetales, then David can get a big KO with Weavile and win the game. If Jack doesn't evolve into Ninetales, then none of David's Pokemon can be gusted up, and he's fine. If Jack evolves into Ninetales and gusts up the Weavile... David still has Umbreon left to attack with. So that Sneasel play, just benching that Sneasel, did all three of those things in one go. That was a huge Sneasel play. That was a genius Sneasel play. We are seeing some really high-level play in this match. Oh. I did speak to the chaps, and they did say, like, oh, Ross, you're, you're in for a good one here. This is a good game. But I tell you what, they were not lying. They were not lying at all. I still think Dav is going to take game two and send us off to a game three. But Jack has certainly maneuvered himself into a good position, in, in, into a place where he can roll from. If really, I cannot remember if David is playing Pokemon Catcher. I might see if I can go and track down his deck list. Because that's going to be pretty big. If David could, could hit heads on a Pokemon Catcher, that's huge. So, obviously, the Umbreon goes down from the Cinderace. Now, we do see Obstagoon here. 
But Obstagoon hits 90. That's not enough right now. Oh, there's Erica's Hospitality. That's going to draw David another four cards. A heads on a Pokemon Catcher ends the game right now, but I don't know if he's got Pokemon Catcher. The other thing to remember is, I believe Jack's out of Welder, and he needs to be able to... I think Jack's out of Welder. There comes a quick ball. So he needs to get Cinderace out of the active and then back in in order to be able to attack. Now there is a Galarian Zigzagoon. But he can't evolve it up at this stage. We got both Lunanoon and both the Obstagoon on the bench, on the field. David essentially also not playing any rare candy. So he's just doing this to drop 10 damage somewhere. So I don't think it really matters. Because remember, David doesn't need to one-hit KO. He can hit with Zigzagoon, and then next turn, he Obstagoon. He either attacks with Obstagoon, or he attacks with Spiritomb, or he attacks with Weavile, and it's game. And so, yeah. It's so difficult to actually get anything rolling here. Jack needs to get the Cinderace in and out of the active. But even if he does, it's still getting KO'd. Jack needs to get a KO with Arcanine, but the problem with Arcanine is you need Welder in the early game and then Arcanine to fuel Arcanine. So I don't think... I don't know if Jack's got any real options left here. He might have a Cinderace out, but he's not got any more energy... I don't think he's got any real way to get the energy on to be attacking. He's got a Growlithe with an energy, but I don't think he's going to attack with Arcanine this turn. And... I mean, essentially... The problem is, even if he gets an Arcanine in the active and David doesn't KO it, and then he gets a KO with Cinderace, Jack's got to take two prizes without David taking a prize. And even though David's got no giant one-hit KO options, I don't know if there's anything Jack can do to take two prizes while slowing David down enough. I think it... I think it might be it, ladies and gentlemen. I think that might be it. Now we do see a roast reveal there to draw three more cards. And Jack's clearly got something up his sleeves here. Or he's just going through the motions trying to get his options going. Interestingly, we've not seen Guzzlord this game. Thing is, Guzzlord hits 120 and takes an extra prize, but Jack's main attackers have 140 and 170. And you can whittle them down, you can use Vitality Band, you can use the Obstagoon line to whittle them down, but it's still not a very easy thing to actually do to take those bad boys out. And bad boys they are, ladies and gentlemen. Bad boys they are. Yeah, and that's it at the end of the day. I didn't think Jack could come back from that. David played that game beautifully. Taking two prizes with Alolan Meowth and Persian at the beginning of the game really was the difference there. In game one, he was slow setting up and didn't take many early prizes. In game two, taking them for early prizes really was very, very nice. And you might think Jack might well choose to go second in game three just to stop Alolan Meowth. So heading on over then into game three, yes, I'm cutting out the in-between game stuff because we don't need to see it, quite frankly. We see that Jack is starting with a Volcanion, an excellent starter, better if you're going second, and David is starting a Sneasel. But of course, one of the big things for Jack here is that Volcanion can't get KO'd by Alolan Meowth. Simple as that. 
that's surprisingly important. Imagine a world, imagine a tournament in which you legitimately have to think. Now, I need to make sure that if I'm going first, I don't get caught by a Lolan Meowth on turn one. <laughs> I love that we've created that situation. What is it with Jack and turn one poker gear? Like every game. He just really wants those early game supporters. So down comes a score bunny. Down comes a ditto prism star. And an energy on Volcanian. Remember, he cannot attack or play a supporter. So he just passes to David. Very important to note here that, yes, I know I've gone on and on about not needing score bunny earlier. Early. You're still going to bench it if you've got it, right? Now, is David going to go alone in the elf here? It's greedy, but I'd love it. I would love it. Now, remember, Sneasel's actually got a really interesting attack. For a single energy, if you went second on your first turn of the game, you get to discard an energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon. So we could use that Sneasel to just take the energy away from Volcanion. That would legitimately be an option. <laughs> Oh, we are talking about cards we don't usually talk about here. There is something about taking, like, genuine, amazing, world-quality players and, and high-level world-quality players at that and then chucking them in a tournament with these weird deck-building rules and be like, see what you come up with. Clearly, he's gone for Spiritomb, though. As much as I love Alolan Meowth, and I think I've made it fairly clear that I do, the reality is that Spiritomb is David's early game attacker. We've seen this in all three games so far. David wants the Spiritomb early so that he can start getting damage on the field early and start getting rolling nice and early. So we do see a Cynthia coming down with a Lily's Polka Doll on the field, and I think that is an excellent, excellent play. Lily's Polka Doll buys David time. And between Lily's Polka Doll and Black Market Prism Star, when it works, it's actually really easy to buy yourself just another couple of turns and that's all you need and we've said a few times this game david's deck a lot of the time needs a couple of turns yes he's got the cheeky alola me alf play that we saw but a lot of the time what you really need here is just that little bit of time to get rolling just to try and build yourself up a little bit So he's got a second spirit tomb down now and obviously gets the damage on you'd be amazed how many people have watched play spirit tomb and miss ko's because they <laughs> forgot to put a damage on and we do see sneasel's attack we actually see a and this is a real attack name sneaky smash <laughs> oh that's kind of beautiful so we do see an evolution incense coming down here presumably for a salazzle he's got the raboot down but you got to think he's going to go and get Salazzle for the... Um... He could go Arcanine here. But really, Arcanine's only good this turn if you've got Energy, Welder with two more Energy, and a Switching card. And yeah, he goes for Salazzle. And it has to be. In the same way David's been using Chinchino, you need to be able to have early game options. That, that's very, very important. You need drawing. You need to be able to get cards out. So, yeah, no argument there at all. I think Salazzle's the right play here. Now, it does look like Jack's camera has frozen ever so slightly. Don't worry, it'll be back. See, I told you it's already back. And we do see the roast reveal coming down there. Just having Salazzle on your field just goes, right, now I've got extra draw options. Extra draw options are good. Quick side note, has anyone seen the art from the Sneasel from Burning Shadows? It's horrifying go look it up see what i mean so anyway david here is getting himself a new hand of cards by virtue of playing a cynthia i tell you what he'll do 50 damage with weavile because that salazzle's down and that might be worth it oh I think, now I know there was one turn apparently where David started a little bit early. It might have been that last turn. But we are still on Jack's turn here. We are very much still on Jack's turn. He's got an energy on the active Volcanian here.
and he's playing a Pokemon Communication. He's got himself a Growlithe and a Volpix on the bench here, which is excellent. That means he's very well positioned for his evolutions. I love that he got the early Rabu. He doesn't really need it, but he's just been drawing into them naturally, so it, it doesn't matter. He's not giving anything up for it, and that's kind of awesome. Consider me entirely in favour. So... I mean, he's certainly setting up his bench nicely. Having a Volpix, having a Growlithe, having a Salazzle, having a Rabu. And it looks like he's just attacking with Volcanion. And now David's going to continue his turn. He's already played the supporter. Remember, he's already drawn the card. So he's kind of starting halfway through his turn. Because he started his turn a little bit. Oh, no. No, maybe he didn't then. Weird things are afoot, ladies and gentlemen. Weird things are afoot. But we are now halfway through David's turn, and he is playing the Cynthia here. If you're in the chat when we're doing the live premiere, or if you're in the, the comment section, tell me what happened there, would you? We saw turns kind of meld together a little bit. So we do see the Cynthia coming down here, and David's just going to get himself a new hand of six cards. Might be they didn't play the Cynthia before, actually. That's what I'm going for. So he plays a Galarian up uh, Zigzagoon down anyway. Drops a damage counter. Probably onto the Growlithe. Yeah. You re he needs one on the Growlithe, three on the Cinderace as a kind of minimum. So I think dropping the one onto the Growlithe is a good call. And then he just switches out for Lily's Clefairy Doll. And I like this. David's not got any... Oh, sorry. Jack's not got any abilities rolling as it stands at the moment. And actually, if if Jack does get a lot of abilities rolling, he's actually got that ditto that could evolve into a Weavile as well if he needs it. So once again, what we see here from David, and those Lily Pokedot are huge in David's deck. What we are seeing is David just literally buying time. Just going, look. I need some more time to evolve up Pokemon. I need some more time to get damage onto my Spiritomb. I've got a good, I've got a good option. I, I've got some stuff that I can do here, but I'm going to give it a few minutes. I'm going to slow my roll, and I'm just going to let you KO a, a pointless Pokemon in the active. Well, it is a Pokemon, but it started as an item card. So we need to try and count supporters, uh, stadiums here. So Jack has played the first stadium. It is Heat Factory Prism Star. He's also played Professor's Research Magnolia to go and draw himself a new hand of seven cards. Now, he does need... A, no, no, he doesn't. He needs another energy on the field in order to do 110 with um, Volcanion rather than doing 50. But having said that, you know... Pokedol's got 30 HP, so it really doesn't matter. But he wants to get the energy on the field for himself. I mean, for Jack here, again, and Jack is playing a very evolutiony deck, so he could use this opportunity to do some evolving. The thing is, he needs to be really careful of Weavile right now. So evolving Arcanine from Growlithe, fine. But does he really want to evolve the Volpix and Rabu and put another two evolutions on the field, meaning that Weavile's then hitting 150? I'm not sure that he does. It's a very interesting decision. And that's the thing about David's deck. There are traps to fall into. Oh, you've played too many abilities. Now my Weavile's going to crush you. Oh, you've run out of stadiums. Now Black Market Prism Star is going to stick on the field. Oh, you've let me use Guzzlord to take extra prizes. Now I'm ahead in the prize race. Oh, you've left a 70 HP Pokemon in the active going first. Now Alolan Meowth is going to take you down for a cheeky prize. David's deck has so many traps to fall into. And that's why it's so difficult to play against. And difficult to play. Because there are plenty of situations where... Oh, I put the energy in the wrong place. Now I can't retreat and get Alolan Meowth with the KO. Oh, my opponent's played loads of abilities. But I don't have a Ditto or a Sneasel down. So I can't use Weavile. Or, oh, I've put a Sneasel down. Wait, I'm playing against a deck that doesn't play any abilities. Now I've just wasted a bench space. It's an extremely awkward deck to play with and against. 
Jax is a more straightforward deck as far as it goes. But the real theme of Jax's deck is power. He has very big, very hard-hitting Pokemon. And then he's got a draw engine and a gusting. Oh, yeah, and a pretty nice big basic as well. And that all out. I mean, we saw him just overwhelm Pablo in his round one game. Pablo's lightning deck just could not compete. It was one of the one of the more one-sided games we've seen in the tournament. Because Pablo's Pokemon weren't getting one-hit KOs, and Jack's were. And, and the, the game did the game was very heavily favoured towards Jack. Now we do see Volcanion getting a second energy and taking a KO onto Spiritomb. You'll notice that Ninetales did a whole bit of the old gusting there. But, I mean, Weavile is an option now. An Evolution Incense comes down. Could be a Lanoon, could be a Chinchino, could be an Umbreon to evolve from Ditto Prism Star. Or it could be a Weavile. There's a few different options. Either way, if David's got an energy, he's taken a KO. He can't take a KO with Spiritomb yet, because with another damage he's doing 100. I suppose with Zigzagoon and Vitality Band, but no. So he's gone for the Umbreon, so he is just going to evolve Ditto into Umbreon. You imagine he's probably got the energy if he's going for this play. Otherwise, there's no reason to evolve into Umbreon this turn. You can just do it next turn. And then he can just put Lily's Pokedoll on the bottom of his deck. Oh, there's Energy Retrieval. That's just as good. So we can now attach to Umbreon, put Lily's Pokedoll on the bottom of his deck, ready to use again in the future. And then Umbreon's just going to revenge for 120 and take a KO. And that's a good thing, right? It means that David's keeping up in the prize race. Jack takes a prize, David takes a prize. It does make David behind in the prize race, which can be kind of terrifying, given that Jack's Pokemon are very high HP and very difficult to take down. But then, by the same token... Between Black Market, Prism Star, Lily's Pokedoll, and Guzzlord, David has got ways to turn the prize race into his favour. Oh, now that's an interesting one. Jack has just gone and replaced his own stadium. He's replaced his own Heat Factory Prism Star with his own giant half. Would you look at that, ladies and gentlemen? That should make it easier for David to get Black Market later in the game. Now, we do see Welder 2 Energy onto Growlithe. Does Jack have the Arcanine? It's going to be awkward if he doesn't. He's got Quick Ball. Dropping a Salandit. Quick Ball won't get him Arcanine. Arcanine ain't no basic, ladies and gentlemen. Arcanine ain't no basic. He's an evolution. Now, maybe he's got a Pokemon Communication. He can use to put it and swap it for an Arcanine. I mean, if he's got an energy, he might still have Roast Reveal. I can't remember if he's used that or not this turn. But he needs to have that Arcanine. Otherwise, it's not... I mean, to be fair, Umbreon as an attacker is not good if your opponent didn't just take a prize. But, yeah. So down comes Arcanine. So he does have the Arcanine. That's pretty huge. And now he's going to be able to hit for 120. Take the KO on Umbreon and accelerate two energy. Presumably onto the benched Growlithe. So he's basically Arcanining into Arcanine. Early game Arcanine, late game Cinderace. It's a good thing for Jack to do. It's it's very much a strong option here. So I would yeah, we oh he's already so not only did he have Arcanine, but he also had an Evolution Incense, which uses to get a second Arcanine. So I'm here being all like, oh, I hope he's got the Arcanine else. Putting that Growlithe active was a bad thing. No, he doesn't have Arcanine. He has two Arcanine. So there's the KO. And he gets to get two energy from his discard pile onto one of his Pokemon. It does go on to the Arcanine. You had to think that was going to happen. Because now one more energy. And now he's basically just flicking between Arcanine. And we're starting to see this as more like game one that Jack won. Than game two that David won. David's board is not looking impressive. And David's behind on prizes. And Jack is setting up his big Pokemon. Plus, he's already got a Raboot down. 
Now, the good news is he is able to use Ordinary Rod there, gets back a Spiritomb and Umbreon and two energy. Very important, because they're good attackers. Now, assuming he hasn't put a damage counter on Spiritomb this turn, and I don't believe he has, he will be able to get a KO on Arcanine here. He puts a fourth damage counter on Spiritomb. And then attacks for 130 damage. And of course, there we go. There's the fourth damage counter. Oh, look. That 10 damage he dropped with Galarian Zigzagoon like three turns ago. That is the difference between David getting a KO and not getting a KO. Like I've said, this is a deck where you have to play very carefully. You have to plan several turns in advance. And yeah, it is pretty important. So down comes an Eevee here, ready to evolve into Umbreon. Remember, David just recovered one of them from his discard pile. And down comes a Minchino. And you'll notice there is a Lanoon on the bench now. Which means at some point, David is going to be able to evolve into, a obst into an Obstagoon. Oh, now here's an interesting one. David has dropped Black Market Prism Star. I thought Jack still had one giant half left. I could be wrong. But I think David is just trying to stop Jack going too far ahead. Now, there is another reason to play Black Market Prism Star here, and that is it's sticking Jack on four prizes. And remember, David plays Beast Ring and he plays Boswell. No, not Boswell. Other one, Guzzlord. Eh, double Z. So, if Jack doesn't take a prize here, not only does that give David an extra turn, essentially, in the game, but it gives David an extra turn where Beast Ring is activated. We haven't seen it this game. We saw it come out really nicely in game two against Toby. Or was it game one? Ah, it was one of them. We'll see. But we see Jack here playing his own Ordinary Rod. Just getting some stuff back. And then he plays Professor Magnolia. Discards a few things, including a Cynthia and Caitlyn. Very good supporter. In most of the decks, nobody's played it this game yet. And then he gets himself a new hand of seven cards. Of course, one of the best reasons to play it in Jack's deck is just to reuse Welder. Welder's pretty good. Welder is definitely pretty good. So, what's Jack got here? What are the options for Jack? He's got Arcanine in the active. He only needs one more energy to take a KO, but he's not taking a prize for that KO. Now, he has got a Rabu on the bench, so an energy ability would get the free energy onto a Cinderace for 190. That's nice. And he does have Score Bunny there as well. Honestly, for as long as Black Market Prism Star is on the field, then either we need to see Jack gusting, and we do see Fiery Flint here that's going to allow Jack to search his deck for four fire energy. That may well be for gusting here. Because the cool thing is, he discards two energy with nine tails. And then he can immediately accelerate those same two energy with Arcanine. So the energy aren't going to be lost. He does still need an energy, mind you. But then again, if he searches three with Fiery Flint, even rather than just four, just three, that's one for Arcanine. And two for Nine Tails. The Cynthia is discarded. Fiery Flint, I don't want to salad it. Fiery Flint makes you discard two cards from your hand in order to search for four energy. It's like a double giant half. You discard double the amount of cards and you search for double the amount of cards. So down comes Great Bull here. Jack's going to go ahead and get himself a Pokemon. He's going to get himself... Is it Victini Prism Star? It's Victini Prism Star. Oh, is it? Or is it? Or is it? Oh, it's Rabu. You broke my heart, Jack. Of course, Victini Prism Star is a phenomenal Pokemon. For two fire energy, you shuffle all your basic energy from your discard pile into your deck. Do 20 damage for each one shuffled back. Firstly, great for recovering energy. Secondly, 
it's awesome for just doing a ridiculous amount of damage. It does do a huge amount of damage. Or it can do. And I know that's not necessarily needed against David's deck. The only really high HP Pokemon he's got is Obstagoon. And Obstagoon's a stage 2 that does not hit that much damage. We've seen it's really good for the damage. And like I say, there will be some games where David drops Obstagoon and his opponent goes, well, now what? But unfortunately, it's extremely unlikely at this stage that anything's going to work from it. You know, so Jack doesn't need the giant damage with Victini. But it's still a nice attacker. So we do see... Oh, do we? Do we? Do we? We see the third energy coming down on Arcanine. Is he going to gust when he is going to use Nine Tails? He kind of has to. Otherwise, he's not taking a prize. And anything on the bench is up for grabs. Everything on the bench is either colorless or has no energy. Well, none of it has any energy. But either way, Black Market Prism Star's not activating. But then again, was this David's plan all along? Look at David's field. He's got an EV, which even when evolving to an Umbreon, ain't taking out that Arcanine. He's got a Lanoon that even when evolving up into Obstagoon, ain't taking down that Arcanine. There's only two abilities on the field, so that Weavile ain't taking down the Arcanine. And Chinchino ain't taking down that Arcanine. So, yes, okay, Jack is gusting around here, but he's letting David keep the Spiritomb. And now the Spiritomb will take a KO. A fifth damage counter means he'll actually do 160, and that'll work nicely. So grabbing up the Lanoon, definitely the right option. We've seen Obstagoon dropping three damage counter on Cinderace and bringing them into play here. But what we're seeing now is Jack having to play around David's deck. Hasn't evolved either of the Rabu because he's worried about Weavile. Had to Gus then rather than take out David's good attacker because he's scared of Black Market Prism Star. Can Jack keep doing that? Can he do that turn after turn after turn? Maybe. His deck's got a lot of energy, and certainly Victini Prism Star will get all the energy back into his deck. But game one, we just saw Jack absolutely roll, and David couldn't get set up. Game two, we saw David using all of his tricks to pull out a victory. What we've seen in game three is really a mixture of the two so far. Yes, Jack's got his big, powerful Pokemon out, and yes, he's been taking big KOs. But we've not... We've seen Jack have to go to so much effort here just to try and avoid David's Pokemon and his tricks. Now, we do see Professor Elm's lecture coming down here, getting an Alola Meowth and an Eevee and a Spiritomb. I assume the Alolan Meowth's not getting benched. There is an argument to get an Alolan Persian so you can take out Pokemon with no energy on the bench, like that Rabu, for instance, but no. But you see, now th this is going the way David wanted it to. Now David has got the KO on the Arcanine, and his board is way better than it was last time. If Jack had KO'd the Spiritomb. He wouldn't have taken a prize, but he would have left David in a really awkward position in terms of not having Pokemon to attack with. As it is, yes, Jack took a prize, but because he took a prize, now his Arcanine's going down. And David's got a way better board. It's awkward, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not saying Jack made the wrong decision. I'm saying he went for a prize rather than going for board control, but now he's having to attack with Cinderace now that Weavile's doing 100. And remember, Black Market Prism Star is still down. And to be fair, if everything goes according to plan... Jack can probably gust for his last three prizes. Here's the thing. Spiritomb can take down Cinderace. It needs 10 more damage, but Vitality Band, uh, Glo uh, Galarian Digzagoon, it'll take it down. So what we're basically seeing here is, is Jack, if he can't get rid of that Black Market, and bearing in mind his last stadium might be prized. If Jack can get rid of Black Market Prism Star, his only option is to gust around with Ninetales. Firstly, that depends on him having two energy ready to discard with Ninetales every turn. 
And secondly, that means that David needs to do basically nothing because he's got a really good attack and the jack isn't taking down. Yeah. That is, um, that is not ideal. That black market prison star is putting in work. Really putting in work. Now, I, I don't know. We might have missed it earlier. The giant half might be in the discard. Jack might have no stadiums left. As it stands at the moment, something needs to change. Something's got to give. Can he really gust for his last three prizes? And where are his attackers? Attacker number one, that Raboot when it becomes a Cinderace. Okay. Attacker number two, the other Raboot when it becomes a Cinderace. Okay. Attacker number three, he needs to start taking multiple prizes with the same Pokemon, which is something he was good at in game one. It didn't work in game two and he lost it. It ain't work in this game either. The other thing you need to bear in mind, Cinderace's ability that gets two energy on it from the discard only works when you bring it active during your turn, not between turns. So after this Cinderace, assuming it is a Cinderace in a minute, goes down, he needs to promote another Pokemon and then switch or retreat into Cinderace. And that is asking a lot. I think David might have this, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Even though it's tied on prizes and it's it's Jack's turn, I'm just looking at this going, Jack needs to replace the Stadium or Gust every turn. And that, if you can't replace the Stadium, it's going to be very difficult. And also, David has attackers because he only, he only needs the one, and Jack doesn't. The other thing is, every turn, David can just pop an energy on one of his Pokemon. So let's say Jack takes a KO, so David now has four bench Pokemon, one with energy. David then puts the second energy down. He's got four bench Pokemon, but two of them have energy. If he then, the following turn, no, it is doable. No, it's not. If David evolves Umbreon and gets... Uh, David, there is a possibility here that David could potentially get enough bench darkness Pokemon with energy that Jack is actually locked out of the game unless he gets rid of the stadium. And I know I keep mentioning the stadium, but the stadium is the big story right now. It's stopping Jack winning the game. So down comes an energy... And Jack does not have infinite energy, right? Not unless he starts using Victini Prism Star. Which I know wouldn't be technically infinite energy, but it would be close enough we wouldn't really care, put it that way. So now we get a Roast Reveal. He's going to draw himself three cards. He's only got two cards left in his deck. And he needs two turns after this one. KO and then two more turns. So he needs to be able to put some cards back in his deck or he's going to deck out. If he draws one more card other than at the beginning of his turn. He can still do it now. Take a prize. And then two more turns. Two more cards in deck. It, he won't deck out if he can take a prize every turn. But does he have the resources? He needs an energy on that Rabu on the bench. He needs Cinderace to evolve into. He needs a way to get Pokemon out the active. So now we can Cynthia and Caitlyn to get a supporter back. But he can't draw three cards. If he draws three cards, he decks out next turn. So there's the Welder. So he takes out the Spiritomb, but he doesn't take a prize. So deck out watch is now on because Jack's got two cards in deck and three prizes left to take. Now, I still like that play, incidentally, because, and we talked about it the previous turn, Jack didn't KO the Spiritomb, and then his Arcanine went down. Oh, here comes Weavile. Now, he's not got the KO yet. He can get the KO. He needs Vitality Band, and he needs Galarian Zigzagoon. I believe he's doing exactly 150 at the moment. And I believe he's got at least one of each left in his deck. I believe that is the case. Yeah, it is just a flat 50 times the amount of your opponent's Pokemon with abilities. 
So as it stands, we're looking 150. But remember, as it stands, like Weaver ain't given up a prize. And David's still got attackers rolling. He's got an Umbreon. He's got a Spiritomb. He's got an Eevee ready to evolve. And unless Jack can put more cards back in his deck, he will deck out before he wins the game. He's got two turns left to take three prizes. And you're not allowed to play multiple prize Pokemon. And there's nothing in Jack's deck that will allow him to, to take multiple prizes. David's got Guzzlord. Jack don't got nothing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure Jack can bring this back. So Jack does, uh, so David does just hit for 150. Disappointing, because there's no Obstagoon. Incidentally, if Jack hadn't previously taken down the Lanoon, that Cinderace will be going down right now. So again, really heads up play from both players here, putting stuff in motion, which is going to pay off several turns in the future. But where does Jack go from here? If he's got Cinder... Oh, no, to be fair, right? If he's got Cinderace energy, he can retreat, attach energy, and you... Oh, he's got the Welder. Of course he's got the Welder. Now, this play I love. Because now he's not going to deck out. Oh, my goodness, Jack is pulling off a great turn here. I have been talking, Jack's going to deck out unless he can put some cards back in his deck. Jack's not going to be able to win unless he takes out the Black Market Prism Star. And I've been saying Jack needs more attackers. He's fixing all those problems here. Giant Half replaces Black Market Prism Star. Victini's going to put all the energy back in his deck, so he's not going to deck out. He's going to go down to two prizes remaining. He'll still be ahead by a prize. And not for nothing, he's also turning off Beastering here. Oh, this is good, ladies and gentlemen. This is good. And now he's got two prizes remaining and potentially two Cinderace on the bench to take those prizes. Is there any way David can double Zigzagoon? Is there any way David can drop two Galarian Zigzagoon? Because that would KO Cinderace on the bench while taking a KO with Umbreon and it would jump him ahead in the prize race. That would be huge. I don't know if that's possible to be. I don't know if it's possible. Scoop up net's not going to be printed till Rebel Clash, which would allow him to reuse it. Oh, now there's a Lily's Polka Doll. Now we know Jack's not going to be short of energy because he's got giant half and a deck full of energy. <laughs> so Gusting is going to be in Jack's wheelhouse. So I'm, I'm, if I'm Jack, I'm not terribly worried, unless Jack knows something we don't, which he clearly does because he's got more information than us. But I'm not terribly worried about that Lily's Polka Doll because that Lily's Polka Doll can be gusted around. So, yeah. And Victini's going down, right? Victini's going down to Umbreon. That's not a problem. The Umbreon taken out of Victini is a given at this stage. We're, we're absolutely fine with that. That's going to put both players at two prizes remaining. And then it really is just a war of attrition. Remember, Cinderace only gets the energy when it comes from the bench to the active. And that is legitimately going to be one of Jack's difficulties here. He's going to need Cinderace energy, which you imagine he's got. Okay, so there's a Marnie. Oh, this could this could this could mess Jack up a little bit. Jack needs essentially he needs to get Cinderace and an energy so he can promote the damage Cinderace, retreat it using the energy that's on it. And then bring up the other Cinderace with the energy and get the KO. That's what he needs. If Jack doesn't get Cinderace, then I don't know if he's able to attack next turn. He'd need a Welder, and I don't think he's got any Welder left. And that could open up the door for David to take two prizes and win the game. As it stands at the moment, Jack is ahead on the prize race. Jack has got two prizes left to take. David's got three prizes left to take. As it stands at the moment... Jack is ahead in the prize race and doing rather well. 
So there goes the Victini. Victini goes down. David evens up the prizes. And this is it. What has Jack got? He needs to promote the damaged Cinderace so that he can retreat. Uh, I you know he could do it with an energy, to be fair. He could promote the Raboot, assume he's got an energy in hand. He could promote the Raboot, attach an energy, retreat, and then get the energy on the damaged Cinderace. And then do it that way. That would work. And Raboot does have a, a retreat cost of one. Okay. So he must think he's got a way to... He must think he's got energy Cinderace. And remember, it is so much better for Jack to attack with the undamaged Cinderace, assuming he's got it, because that Cinderace in the active will go down very easily. Oh, can you imagine? What if David's able to pull off some weird double KO next turn using double Galarian Zigzagoon? I don't know if it's possible, but how cool would it be? It would amuse me, frankly. It would amuse me. We've seen some brilliant plays from both players here. We have seen some ridiculously high-level play in this game. Have we got time for one more? Have we got time for a little bit more ridiculous high-level play? I kind of hope we do. I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of enjoying it. <laughs> so there's an energy. But what's he got here? Now he's still got the roast reveal, remember? And again, we're going to be on deck out watch fairly soon. So there goes Cinderace. With the energy. Okay, so now he's got the attack this turn. So now we can retreat that Cinderace, like we said. Bring up the undamaged Cinderace with the two energy on. Hit 190, discard those two energy, take down the Umbreon. And get out to one prize remaining. And then in theory, if he's got an energy next turn, he's just swapping Cinderace. If he's got an energy next turn, he retreats Cinderace. Attaches to his bench Cinderace. <gasps> Wait a second. David plays Guzzlord. David plays Guzzlord and Guzzlord's got an attack that discards the top card of your opponent's deck. And I think Jack's got one card left in deck. Is David actually going to Guzzlord discard his way to victory? I think Jack... I, I could be wrong here. I do, by the way, I know David plays Guzzlord. I know Guzzlord's first attack discards the top card of your opponent's deck. But I'm looking at this, and David, I don't think, has another way to win. Jack's got the win next turn. But if he's got one card left in deck, Mountain Munch can win the game. Oh, he's got it! He's got Rosa! Which means he gets Goslord energy, puts the Lily's Pokemon on the bottom, and he's actually got it! He's actually got it! And he's using Goslord to deck Jack out and win the match! An hour and 40 minutes later, he's actually using Goslord to deck Jack out when he's got game on board! And Jack had game, right? All he needed to do was just retreat into the other Cinderace and attack to win the game. Jack played that so well! He set up perfectly he took down the black market prism star he had both his cinderace ready to go and then david actually got the gold i'm so i'm so proud that i realized that before it happened oh my goodness that was a ridiculous play that was a ridiculous play i don't think david was going to win the game from where he was i don't know if he could have taken out that bent cinderace and it didn't matter Oh my goodness, that was a heck of a play. That is one of the mo that is one of the best endings I think I've ever seen to a game. Goslord Mountain Munch for the win. <laughs> oh, that was genius. Oh, that was worth an hour and 40 minutes of commentating, ladies and gentlemen. That was such a good game. Oh my goodness, that was fun. Huge shout out to David and Jack. That was a thing of absolute beauty. Oh, that was good. That was one of my favorite games I think I've ever commentated. That was brilliant. I'm genuinely hyped about that. And anyone out there that hasn't watched this game won't be hearing me say this, but you have missed an absolute beauty. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That was 
phenomenal. Three good games, back and forth, brilliant play, great decks. I, I kind of hope that's not the best game of the tournament, but oh, it's going to take a lot. That was awesome. Huge shout out to Jack and David for playing that. That was phenomenal. And Dragon Shield and TCG player. Check the links in the description. You know the deal. Comment, like, subscribe. Look, nothing about this is new. I'm going to go and have a sit down. That game was awesome. The second round two game is going to be back in three or four days. We're going to have Josh's psychic deck against Jack's fighting deck. And I hope it's half the game that was. That was awesome. Look after yourselves till next time. Thanks for watching. PTCG Radio. Bye.